Hey guys, this is going to be another quick Linux command video. Check the link in the description for more info and for copy and paste examples. The Linux BG command will resume a stopped background process. This is generally done after stopping a job with the Control Z key sequence. So um, let, let's, let's take a look at how this works and we're, we're also going to be using other commands like kill and and uh, maybe foreground and some other stuff in the, the jobs command. So, um, and I've covered all of those in separate videos too, so go check those videos out as well. So anyways, just jump right in here. Now, we're, we're gonna check our running jobs first. So no jobs running. So I've created a script that I'm gonna run as a background job. It just runs forever, it just sleeps for a really long time. So we're gonna say test1.sh. So we're running this and it just sits there running for a really long time. So you can hit control Z to put it in the background. So you hit jobs and you can see the background there. You have a one stopped job there. Now, if you want to start that job up, you can say BG. This is how you use the BG command BG and specify a modulus. So and the actual job ID number, which is listed right here. So BG modulus one will start job one so run that and now it's it's running now if you uh if you type the jobs command again it will now list it as running so it's running but running in the background not where we are right now now if you want to bring it to the foreground you can type fg modulus one right bring that job right to the foreground now it's in the foreground so we can't type commands or do anything control z again to put it in the background and let's see here then if we want to run it, BG mod one, just like that, right? So we got it running again. So the, the BG command will uh, basically run a command that's been stopped in the background. It will resume it and start it back up into a running state without bringing it to the foreground. The FG command brings it to the foreground. So um, one common use case would be to ping something in the background. Um, I don't, I don't know if I should try give this a shot. Ping. So I created a script specifically for this example, but let's give this a shot with ping anyways. Um, ping. So just like this, now throw it in the background. Jobs. So we see ping is running. So let, let's try BG and I I want to see if I can start this by name. Ping. So, all right, you, you can do it with a, all right, so that starts it up so that it is, so it's in the background and it's, uh, ping is in the background and it's running. Problem is, it's still writing to STD out, so I can still type commands here. So it's not technically in the foreground, but it's still putting output onto my terminal. So that, that's kind of a problem right there. Um, what, what else can we do with it? So that, that's a good example of, of how things behave anyways. And we could actually also say, uh, yeah, hard to do anything with this output, but you could say FG mod ping, right? And now we, we've used the foreground command. Now we can't type commands because it's in the foreground, still outputting the same way. Control Z to stop it. We're going to leave that one stopped. So interesting takeaway from this. <clears throat> you know, when you use background, you can specify the job ID, like we could have said two for the ping command or one for my test script right there. Or you can specify them by name and it's just going to match ping like this. So um, let's see what else this is using. This is called a job spec. So job spec could be the job ID. It could be um, something that starts with a specific string, like um, in this case, ping. So, so the command actually starts with ping. But if I were to do something like test, put te um, actually this is, let, let me stop that for a second. So FG1, one, control Z, jobs. Okay, so they're both stopped. And let's say if I wanted to say BG mod test, right? You would think it would match this, but if you just type your job spec like this, it's, it's only gonna match things that start with test. So no, no matching job. Now, what you can do is um, you can do question mark here and now it will be anything that contains the string test. 
if more, more than one job contains that string, it will be ambiguous and it won't work. But like this, we have one thing that contains it. We can bring that into the background or, or we, can, we can start it up and run it. So you can see test is now running. So uh, what, what else here? Um, so you, you can see we need to run jobs. Um, actually, I'm going to launch a few more just so this will be a better example. So I'm going to say test1.sh, control Z it, run it again, control Z, control Z. So jobs, you see we have a, we have five jobs running now, right? And you notice here next to the job ID, we have a minus and a plus. So the minus is the previous job, the plus is the current job. Now with the job spec, let's say if you wanted to bring something to, if you wanted to run something, you could say modulus plus for the most recent job or the current job. And that brings five into a running state, right? And now the current job is going to be this guy right here, the next one. So now instead of typing a plus, another alternative to uh, typing a plus for the current job is you can just type two modulus or two percent signs. And now we have two of them running. Now, um, you, you know, you can also do the previous job with a minus, right? So this is going to start up job ID number two which was the ping command, not exactly what I really wanted. All right. There we go, got that stopped in, in the background. That, that does get to be kind of annoying with the output like that. Yeah, so anyways, that's basically how job specs work. Quick rundown on job specs and how the uh, the background command or the BG command works. And we've already covered um, the FG command that goes along with it and um, the jobs command. So what, what else? So in, another thing I wanted to show you is the, um, let's see, so there's jobs and jobs dash L. This will show you, um, <clears throat> You know, jobs command will list out IDs and status. So <clears throat> this is going to give you the PIDs, right? Now, um, let's see what else. There, there are a few other useful things. Um, so you can kill things. So we, we could, for example, well, before I kill stuff, um, I want to launch another one. So I have five jobs running now. Now, I could launch another script like this. So test one and hit control Z to put it in the background or put an ampersand on the end like this and now it's gonna be running in the background by default. And if you type jobs, you see number, uh, see job ID number six is running in the background. I didn't have to hit control Z or anything. So you could run this as many times as you want. Just put an ampersand at the end and it is by default going to be running in the background. And you don't even have to use the BG command to start it running. It's going to put it in the background by default and keep it running. It's not going to stop the job. Now, um, let's see what else do I want to show you. So you can kill these. Now you can kill them by, by PID or you can kill them by job ID. So since we're using, um, you know, since we're using jobs, uh, I, I, we're doing like job oriented work. We're just going to kill these by job ID for now. Maybe we'll try PIDs too. So you can see, say kill, and you can say modulus 11. Let's try killing number 11 and jobs. So, all right, looks like that moved this down here. Okay, so one of them was terminated. I think I did not type this right. Let's let's try this again. No space. And so 11 was terminated, right? Let's see if we can terminate 8 and 9. So 8, 9. So we see terminated. And you know what, let's just wait, not do anything and hit jobs again. And you see eventually it just disappears. So it will show something that's recently terminated, but once it's all gone, 
it's it's removed from the list, right? You can still see a job ID 10, even though it basically just goes up from 7 to 10, so it doesn't reorder the job ID numbers. So let's say if you say jobs-l, you view, view them by PID and you can say kill, let's kill number 7, but by PID. Paste. So 7 was terminated. And let's just run this. So we, we terminated that. We, we killed it by PID, not by job ID. So you have job IDs in the this first column. And uh, if you do a dash L anyways, job IDs in the first column. The next column has uh, PIDs, right? And you can kill it either way. So if you're killing by you're going to kill by PID, you just say kill in the PID. If you're killing by job ID, you do modulus and, uh, you know, the job ID, like three or four or whatever. So re really what the, the modulus is doing is letting you specify a job spec, which usually you can just specify the, the job ID if you want. So this is probably more information than you want about the BG command. Um, real simple command, but wor worth understanding the nuances. Now, Another thing you can do, last thing I want to show you, I think this is going to be the last thing, is um, the type of the BG command. So if you say type dash A BG, and yeah, so this is going to run. So BG is a shell built in. So that's built into the bash shell. Um, so Note that it's usually so uh, it's usually a shell built in and also exists as a binary. You'll usually need to use the built in with your shell. So apparently there should be a binary on the system somewhere. Um, but usually for whatever shell you're working with, you're going to want to use the built in version for your shell. So. Yeah. Anyways, I'm not sure if you can do this with a fish shell, just, just, to, just to see. Is a shell built in, defined in this file. So if you're in the fish shell, it's gonna tell you this. Um, yeah, but I was working in the bash shell because that's pr pretty much default for, for Linux. Um, both are great shells. Just you know, be aware of you know that like fish shell is not a POSIX shell. Kind of getting off topic here, but that's basically everything I wanted to show you for today for the BG command. Remember, check the links in the description for more info. Hit the subscribe button for more useful content like this. We also have a ton of other more interesting content covering things like coding, hardware, software, servers, Raspberry Pis, 3D printing, and a whole lot more. Hopefully, you found this useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.